What is the deal with you and Neil? Like, how did this fight come together? Is there any kind of like history or something, or is it is it just something that just happened? Well, first and foremost, we're it's totally cordial. There's no like bad blood. There's yeah, no beef. I like, I'm sure. not that. I'm not that type of guy. Those days. The Kevin Lee days, the Anthony Pettis days, those are long gone. No bad blood. You just attack somebody on stage in front of the world. Other than that, you've been pretty cool. I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, after I fought Carlos Condit, um, I, you know, I called for the Neil Magny fight. It made sense. Uh, he yeah. was kind of like bottom of the top 15. You know, I left lightweight and I think I was ranked like ninth. Yeah. And uh, so I thought, you know, I'm going to jump right in the mix. I'm going to try and get the ranked guy. Yeah. So I thought I had the fight and then... Um, yeah, I thought I thought I was gonna fight him um, in May 2019 on the Rochester card in New York, and um, he he turned me down to fight a guy, uh, Lesio Dos Santos, and I was kind of like, oh, well, shit, you know, that kind of sucks. And then I ended up ended up getting matched up against your guy Diego Sanchez, um, and then uh, things kind of. Uh, yeah, you know he had his his uh, he had his mishap with Usada, which cleared his name. I don't think Neil's a cheater. He's I mean this is a good honest guy, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's actually the guy that when he failed his drug test, he kind of paved the way for these guys to get a fair shake in arbitration because whatever he popped for was so low, and his suspension got just reduced by an, like a great amount. He's kind of a he's kind of like a front runner that kind of help you know that to kind of pave the way for guys that are getting a bad shake uh, from USADA now. So right. kudos to him. Um, you know, so kind of you know there was never any bad blood. There's not like a big storyline. It's kind of like you know I I called for the fight to fight him. Things panned out. He took a different fight. He he had his whole situation with USADA go down. He cleared his name, um, and then he wins against he his first comeback fight. He fights. Um, Leech Jingling uh, from from China, and I'm drunk in Canada at a <laughs> seminar, and uh, <laughs> like I, I taught the seminar, went out, and I was actually with Carlos Condit. We went out, did the seminar, had some beers, and uh, and then he gets on the mic as I'm watching UFC with like all these guys that we did the seminar with, and he calls me out. So oh, I'm like, nice. all right, we got we got to fight. So um, you know, I really was pushing after the RDA fight uh, last year. I was really pushing to fight a guy ranked ahead of me. I just I went from being unranked to beating the number five guy. I was like, dude, I should be top five. I should be fighting these yeah, top yeah. five guys. Um, you you know, COVID happens. I had knee surgery that puts puts me on the shelf, and then. Uh, you know, the, the way the, the landscape of the division was when this fight got scheduled was this is just like the next best guy. You right. know, this, he's ranked one spot below me. I'm not getting the guy ranked ahead of me, but he's one spot below me. I think it'll still do do great things for my number, the number next to my name, which, you know, sometimes I think I make that out to be more than what it is. Sometimes yeah. I need to remember rankings. They're not everything. Yeah. But uh it's the next best thing, and it's a fight that I feel like has been meant to happen for a long time, and, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, and you know what the difference is, too? I mean, the ranking aside, you're on a three-fight win streak, and, and, and you put together three good wins. I mean, you're talking Carlos Condit, Sanchez, and then uh, RDA. So it's like that's three big wins. You, you beat Neil Magny. There's a lot to that, un, un, you know, unrelated to the rank. So, I mean, I think you can jump up quite a bit um, after this fight if you get a win. Yeah, and I, you know, and I, I kind of already have my – my eyes set on, on on who I'm going to ask for next. I, I'm a guy that I'm I'm a man with a plan. I get done with the fight, I'm always ready like ready, yeah. to call the next guy out. That I you know I'm always like, I you know I don't I never look past my opponent, but you know how it is, man. The most crucial time after a win to ask for a fight is when you get your right. 30 seconds of fame on the microphone, and so yep. you got to have a name in the back of your mind so you can capitalize on that. That's what get, gains the most steam. Um, like, you know, I wanted Colby after RDA. That was the fight that I was like, that's, I, I felt that was the right fight. Um, you know, I think him and Hori Masvidal are going to fight next, but you know, I got a couple names in the back of my mind. Um, you know, there's some fights that need to shake out. We're going to see Burns and Usman in, in February, you know, three weeks after me, that's a huge fight for the division. I feel like last year, I feel like last year we didn't see a ton of movement at welterweight. I mean, we did see Usman fight Hori Masvidal. We finally saw, uh, you know, Jeff Neal and Wonder Boy. They fought at the end of the year, but outside of that, there wasn't a ton of ranked fights at welterweight. Where I think 2021 is going to be the year of the welterweight division. I think yeah. that there's going to be a lot of big fights going there. That's what Sean Sean Shelby told me in Abu Dhabi before, long before my fight got booked when I was there for Fight Island. He's like, dude, we're this division. We're done having it not move. Like, be yeah, when yeah. you get home, when your feet touch the U.S. soil. 
you head to the gym and you start getting in shape because we're booking you guys. We're getting this division moving. I'm like, you don't got to tell me twice, Sean. Like he gave you like this motivational speech. So I think this year they really want to get this division moving and I'm excited. You know, I, I, I want to do what I was supposed to. My, my goal last year was to fight three times, wanted to fight in July, wanted to fight on the end of the year card. Life happens, COVID happens, things happen. But I feel like this year I'm I'm, I'm going to continue. I, I'm going to I get a repeat. I get a retry of, of that 2020 goal of mine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to try to I'm going to try to I'm going to try to run it back and do do try to do what I set out to do last year. So I'm going to try to get three fights in this year. And ultimately, my goal is to end end 2021 is is number one contender. And I nice. feel like a win over Neil Magny is going to set me on the right course to, to make that happen. Mike Swick 